Okay, on the screen is what we've done up to this point. We've done some facing on top, and we've done some contouring around the, the perimeter of this part. Next, let me turn off the tool pass here. <clears throat> Next, we're going to do two things. One is, or three things. We're going to take off, I'm going to cut this section here. We're going to cut this section here, complete with the radius, and then we're going to cut this section here but we're going to cut it all the way in so there's um each one of those is a little different but they're all they're all going to be um will be two contours and there will be a pocket so first thing is let's figure out how are we going to cut this if we're going to cut a contour like we did last time we need to chain and in order to chain you need something that nice continuous curve but we have these segments so let's work on making a chain that we can use so I'm gonna put in level 30 and I'm gonna call this the tab construction it's gonna be real simple all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take circle zoom in here so we can see it and I'm going to get the center of this arc. And then I'm going to pick up a point on that arc for the radius. So that will fit exactly along this arc. Um, then that'll, that'll be fine. I say OK. And we will then, um, that'll be enough for this and this section because we can use the circle that is inherent to the part there so we don't need to make a second we'll come back to this top top one in just a moment so go up to tool paths do a contour c-plane wireframe select that chain and um, where did it get selected Look for it. So that's the that's the correct direction. I got lucky on the correct direction there. Um, if we want to look at the proper way to do the correct direction, uh, Mastercam splits up these circles on uh, the quadrants. So you can see it started on a quadrant here, where a quadrant is 0, 90, 270, or 360 degrees on, I guess it would be, this coordinate system up here. So let's just uh, just to make sure we understand it, let's deselect and let's try to make the arrow go to the right just to prove we can. Oops, I missed it. And if we zoom in, we can see why. Say I'm picking this arc section here. So let's uh, deselect that. And there you go. You can see the arc is starting from the center going to the right. If I deselect, I pick it up over here, arc goes to the left. So I want to make sure that I pick, I select this big arc. It was very easy for me to make the mistake of picking up this small arc here and don't want to make that mistake. So going to the left is good. We're going to do climb mill around the outside. I'm going to say OK. Tool will be a half inch end mill holder. It's going to be a cat 40 ER32. Cut parameters. We've done this before. It's going to be the same thing. We're going to do wear, left compensation. We're going to leave nothing on the walls. Depth cuts. These are left over from last time. Uh, on this one, we're actually going to use a finish cut because the finish cut will be on this surface here. So it'll give us a nice, pretty surface there. Lead in, lead out. Uh, we'll use that. Breakthrough. Definitely turn breakthrough off. If we left it at 50 thou, that would make this ledge here 50 thou too low. Multi passes, we're not going to um, need that, I don't think. So we will turn that off, give it one finish pass, and just mix it up. I'll give it 20 thou, but um, it doesn't really matter what it is. Um, I, well, at least for the purposes of the video, it doesn't matter what it is because I'm just guessing on if that's going to be a good one or not. Linking. Uh, linking is probably okay on the depth, but let's make sure. And then top of stock. Where's top of stock? 
Um, top of stock is left over from last time up here. And feed plane and uh, retract are the same as last time. Make sure coolant's on. And we'll say OK. And that didn't turn out well at all. And so we're going to have to go and figure out what did we select incorrectly for the depth? The the top, the feed plane looks sort of looks sort of okay. So it's kind of, kind of appropriate depth down from here, but this is completely inappropriate. So let's go back into parameter and let's select that again. Linking parameters, depth. Um, this circle here on the top should be fine. So I'll select it, hit OK, and it's no good again. So when this happens, uh, first thing I think is that my planes are bad. So let's go in there and oh, well we didn't recreate it. So we got a dirty operation, and we recreate a dirty operation. Oh, okay. So here we go. Right height. Um, when I said the planes are bad, I looked at the planes and they looked okay. Uh, the coordinate system and so I guess I just uh, incorrectly picked the the depth and then on top of incorrectly picking the depth then I um, I then forgot to do uh, to regenerate the dirty operation anytime you go in here I can click on parameters and I can cancel out and it's still valid if I go in here click on parameters and um, I'm gonna change something that's insignificant like I'll change this to 0.356 376 now I've got a dirty dirty operation I have to go regenerate that and because that was such a small change we won't see any any difference it's just the spacing between these these cuts um, the end height will be the same so that's um, that should be fine let's do the next one the next one here is pretty simple except we got this radi this radius in the radius, we're going to have to make a new tool for it. Well, it's a 16th inch radius, so I'm going to go to Tool Manager. And um, because I don't have to actually pay for this tool, I'm going to then, um, what I'll do is I'll copy this tool. Copy, and I'll paste it. And I'll add another. And then I will double click here. And let's see, type. Change it to a ball mill, and the corner radius is going to be 0625. Diameter will be 0.5. Let's say our foot length is one and a half, and I'm just guessing on these numbers here. So really, what you're going to have to do is go into the tooling catalog and um, make sure you you really get the absolute right information. Um, this doesn't look right in the picture, and it's because the arbor diameter is wrong. At least how how it looks in my head. Should be half inch diameter all the way down, and then have a corner radius of 0.0625. I'll say OK. Oops. Let's go in there again, and let's change the name because if we call it a half inch end mill, we'll never know what that is. Okay, so Mastercam might actually have had this tool in stock. It's a 16th inch radius is not the most exotic thing in town, but I think it's a good example of how to make a tool. Really simply, you can see it's it's really quick. It's easy. So now what do we have to do? And I'm going to turn off that path. We're going to do essentially the same thing again, except in fact we're going to do the same thing so much. What I'm going to do over here is I'm going to copy this operation and I'm going to paste it. Now I could have gone in here to tool pass contour and filled it out again. Now we've got identical operation which is not exactly what we want. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to reselect the geometry. We've been in this window before to change directions but we can just do a rechain all which says the chains that I selected are no good. I want to choose new ones. So I'm going to do wireframe C plane like I did before. Choose this because I, I want to cut this shelf here. And I'm just going to pretend like the radius isn't there because the radius is built in that, bu that bull end mill. So I'll select this guy. Say OK. OK. 
still not done, but we're we don't have to do a whole lot here. Really, all we have to do is change the depth, and the depth will be. Let me zoom in so we can. Probably picked the wrong thing last time, but not zooming in far enough. So there's a corner. Say OK, and then regenerate the dirty operations, and let's zoom out and make sure it looks uh, reasonable. So that actually does look pretty reasonable. It cuts to the right height. It's a little further in than last time. So um, uh, one of the things that's easy to do is to be really tempted to go and um, val go do the verify and absolutely everything. I'm going to show you another way to do things. It's faster if you have a real complicated model. So I'm going to turn off the tool paths and I'm going to select both of these operations. So I did a control clicked on three and then control clicked on four and just like uh, Windows conventions and then I'm going to go to backplot which is sort of like verify except what it does is it actually I'm going to back out I'm just going to get the screen better uh, better aligned oops it's upside down I've got to go to let's see view standard views I want to look at the back no, nope. what is it? What was I looking at? Right, view, standard views, left. Okay, I think that's what I want. <coughs> so let's go back to backplot. And what backplot does, as you can see here, is outline of the tool. And I can zoom around, and I did it real quick. Um, I'll slow down in just a minute. But um, it makes it it makes it easy to see where the tool is going very quickly. Uh, it doesn't do the nice 3D animation of the um, the cutting action, but that's it's okay in a lot of instances. So let me slowly here. You can see that uh, started outside the part, came in, and now it's going to make a second pass. And let's rotate this guy and come around. So it's it's way up high. Notice up here there's a mark in the middle. You can see the separation of the two. Right here, there's a separation of the two tool paths. So I'm going to zoom around, and we can look in here easily. You can see that this this tool path here butts right up against um, that feature that we want. And let's go back to the left view. And if we keep going a little bit, you're going to see this next one. It's going to make that. Actually, you know what? What I've noticed here is it's going to make a first pass uh, and second pass. That's going to, um, yeah, that's fine. Uh, so, a first pass it's a rough hand, second pass it's a finishing. And it does, and if I zoom, if I, not zoom, but if I skip all the way to the end there and we look inside, it looks like it's. Let's see if we can get the right view. Might just be hard to get this view. Right in there, you can see that it's it's going right through that radius, and that's what we want with a bull with a bull end mill. So, if if you know enough about your cut that you can just look at it like this, uh, back plot can be f a lot faster. Another thing that it does is you can hit the double down arrows and go to info and it will actually tell you your cycle time. So that's an hour on that cut. We haven't set feeds and speeds on this so um, I wouldn't say that's uh, it's valid because we're gonna we're going to go do feeds and speeds at, at some point. So I'm going to say OK and to compare let's go into validate. Actually we're gonna we, this isn't gonna work. We're gonna have to go select everything and validate. Validate stop and off op, each operation. So there's facing Here's the uh, contouring around the part. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to slow it down because I want to see with more detail what's happening. Try to get a good view. I can look down the edge of this thing and do it again. So it, it doesn't show you all the detail in the world because it's doing such a simple move. But it's um it's doing accurate uh, simulation here, so it's uh, going and cutting piece by piece, 
There's its uh, finish. And now it's in the operation. So that's um, that's the surface of those tabs. And next it's going to come with a bull end mill and we're going to look at it and it should uh, make us, leave us with a nice radius there. Oops, that was not good. Hit the wrong button. So I'm going to change to 100 moves per refresh. This is going to make it faster. It won't display everything. It only displays every hundredth move on the screen um, just to offload the video card. So let's Let's make it go as fast as it can. Skip this one. When you do lots of these validates, uh, in, you want to make them go fast a lot of the time. So, OK. And I'm going to skip through the next one because we just saw that. And uh, now I'm going to slow it down. And I'll show you a neat trick in an upcoming video on how to, another, another way to make this even faster. And so I'll play this. And that doesn't. Oh, you know what? That's a sharp corner. Looks like we didn't put the the bull end mill in there. So that's easy to fix. So you can see very clearly. Sharp corner here in the model. There's a sixteenth inch radius. So let's get out of here. It's the one thing we forgot to change. So we're going into this. We copied and pasted, and that's that's why we had the bad setting brought over. So I'm just going to go select a different tool. Well, you can see it's, it's a dirty operation. Regenerate the dirty operation. And in fact, I bet you that G code is identical. But the difference is that um, that our simulation will be different. So one thing we can do. Um, I'm just going to leave it for another another video but we can do it now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the first three tool paths not the last one that we're actually interested in and I'm going to put a hundred in there make it go fast and I'm just going to completely not pay any attention to it my only goal is I want to get to the end of it and then I can save it okay Done. So I'm going to save this and let's get into the right folder. And so I'll save this as Pat's Flange 4 and say OK. So now I've saved it as an STL file. Now, what do you do with that? If I just select the last operation, I can go into here and before I had a box I actually probably I should have picked the solid the box and the solid ended up being the same just by luck not not by any doing that I did I can change that to file go in here and go pick that file I just made Pat's flange 4 say okay and you can see that I actually have this is the cut file from last time so this time we don't have to start from scratch and wait for that verify and this makes verifying a lot faster if you have a solid base to work from and you're trying to iterate through something a change of detail so let me slow this down and play it where's our bolt end mill there it is oh you know what it didn't show it very well because it was only doing every hundred so let's back up and do this again you can see we're making making our cuts and our finish cut cut finish cut cut finish cut and there we go we're done so let's zoom in and we can see indeed we have a sharp corner here like in the CAD model and we have a 16th inch radius like in the CAD model these uh, green lines are errors um, in the STL file the STL file has a, a finite tolerance it's made up of triangles and um, the simulation is has a finite tolerance. It's it's not infinitely accurate, but if you zoom in to get a feel for how big these these problems are, you zoom, 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 and you can see that they're tiny little things, and they're really of the nature of the of the triangles that you make up. If you want to, you can increase the accuracy of those, but uh, things get slow and files get big real fast so I, I'd say this is a success and for the next video we'll work on the work on getting this valley and the bores um, cut out